A couple of months ago, I did a video with the new M1 iPad Pro, and I was testing the speed of the Thunderbolt port. Apple advertises its devices having Thunderbolt and being suitable for use with fast external storage. Uh, so we checked it out with an external SSD, and uh, the results were very underwhelming. Uh, if you want to check that video out, uh, there's a link up here. Now we're going to test it again uh, with iPadOS Beta 5. Let's see whether Apple has fixed these issues. To test the performance of the Thunderbolt port, we're going to be copying some files. Uh, what I did last time is I created a folder with lots of different types of files and sizes of files, and it came to about 26 gigabytes. And I then created an image, a single image file of the same size. Uh, so we thought we would test both of those to see whether there was any major difference between them. Uh, and let's just bring up the results from that previous test. Uh, so first of all, it's the read test. So this is copying from the external drive to the internal SSD of the iPad Pro. And we can see that the single file took 47 seconds. Uh, and that was 1 minute 20 for the folder of mixed files. Now if you just compare those figures with, say, the M1 Mac Mini, you can see that the Mac Mini managed to read the single file in 12 seconds and the folder of mixed files in 13 seconds. So the Thunderbolt performance of the iPad Pro is really lagging behind other machines with the M1 chip, like the M1 Mac Mini. Now if we look at the write performance, so this is copying from the internal SSD on the iPad to the external SSD. Uh, it took 3 minutes 44 seconds for that single file and four minutes and two seconds for the folder of mixed files. Now, again, if we compare that with the M1 Mac Mini, we can see that it uh, did the single file in 23 seconds and the folder of mixed files, well, that was also 23 seconds. So again, the Thunderbolt port on the M1 iPad Pro running iPadOS 14, it just doesn't work as advertised. And I took quite a bit of heat in the comments over pointing this out. Uh, a lot of people saying that, well, I shouldn't be saying this because Apple are going to fix it anyway in iPadOS 15. Uh, this argument just doesn't stand up. You can't use your iPad without iPadOS, and you can't use iPadOS without an iPad. The two things go together, and they are one product, two halves of one product, if you like. So uh, for Apple, they're currently selling the M1 iPad Pro with iPadOS 14, and they're marketing it as having this Thunderbolt functionality, but it doesn't work. So Apple deserve to be called out on that, and they should respond, really, to all of the other reviewers who are saying the same thing as me. The Thunderbolt port is not working properly. Something else that was said in the comments as well is that the SSD inside the iPad Pro is affecting things and perhaps slowing things down. Uh, a couple of people even said that it's an eMMC drive inside the iPad. Um, it isn't. It's NVMe. Uh, all of the iPad Pros are NVMe, and they uh, have been for a while. In fact, even the iPhones since the 6S uh, have NVMe drives in them. Uh, but it's not as fast as the drive that you'll get in the M1 Mac Mini. Uh, I found an app called uh, Jazzbench on the iPad, and I, I just I don't know how accurate that is, but I ran it. Uh, and it shows about 1,900 megabytes per second for that internal drive on the M1 iPad. So I don't think that is the bottleneck here at all. So inside this uh, Thunderbolt enclosure, I've got an NVMe drive. It's a Western Digital Black SN750. Uh, I think it's a 512 gigabyte model. Uh, this Thunderbolt enclosure, I've tested this with a Windows PC with Thunderbolt. I've tested it with Intel Macs, and I've tested it with the M1 Mac Mini, and it runs very quickly on all of those machines. It is only the M1 iPad Pro that seems to struggle with writing to this drive. So let's see how this Thunderbolt drive does now with iPadOS 15. Of course, the file system on iPadOS isn't the greatest. Uh, there aren't loads of benchmarking tools that we can use to test this, so we're going to go back to the old trusty stopwatch. So, Erin, I've got a job for you. Erin is going to be my trusty assistant here. I hope you've got your stopwatch ready. And I've got to say, Erin, uh, I took the time today to pop on a shirt. I've even broken out the cufflinks, and um, it's nice to see you made an effort anyway. Uh, so I'm going to start the file copying, and I'll, I'll tell Erin when to go, and she's just going to hold up the stopwatch, and um, to save your pain, we're going to speed up the footage. Now, I should say that we're testing this live. I haven't pre-done these tests before recording this video, so what you're getting is our actual reaction to this. The time it took here to copy the single file from the internal SSD to the external SSD was 31 seconds. How about that? 
So that's a lot quicker than the previous uh, 3 minutes 44 seconds. So it does indeed look like Apple have fixed it. Uh, so now we're going to try the folder of mixed files. So an almost identical time for the folder of mixed files at, uh, well, I think we'll call that 31 seconds again. So basically the same, and a massive improvement on performance from the previous four minutes and two seconds. Uh, so now what we're going to do is copy those files back to the internal SSD on the iPad Pro. There's a bit of a theme developing here because that's uh, 31 <laughs> seconds again. Uh, that's for the single file reading back in and previously it took 47 seconds. So again, we've got a performance bump. So last of all, we'll try that folder of mixed files. Yeah, you guessed it, 31 seconds. Brilliant. So everything takes 31 seconds now in iPadOS 15. Uh, what a great result. Um, thank you so much for your help, Erin. I quite literally could have done it without you. Uh, so we'll pop up a graph on screen now of the comparison between previously on iPadOS 14 and with iPadOS 15 Beta 5. And we'll just pop in as well the Mac Mini's results with these, because this is what the M1 chip is actually capable of. Uh, and you'll see there's still a fairly big performance difference between the M1 Mac Mini and the iPad Pro. But considering how bad it was before, I'm pretty chuffed to see these results. And I'm really glad that Apple has sorted out this issue. I think it would have been better if Apple didn't market the product as having something that wasn't available and still isn't technically because iPadOS 15 hasn't officially been released yet. And I've heard from people in the comments section who bought this iPad and were bitterly disappointed uh, because they were hoping for better Thunderbolt performance. Uh, I think Apple should have been a bit more upfront and just said Thunderbolt is coming in the next operating system. Would that have stopped you from buying an M1 iPad Pro? Uh, it wouldn't have changed my decision uh, and I'd have felt a lot better about it. Instead, I feel a little bit cheated by Apple for the uh, six months that I've spent without having the thing that I paid for. Uh, what do you think? I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments section. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this quick test today. Uh, and uh, thanks in advance for all of your shares, your likes, and your subscriptions. And uh, I'll see you again soon for some more geekery.